Hi, my name is Dr. Dorothy Jean Tillman. I was a child prodigy, or some would say, I started going to gifted schools, and I didn't skip a bunch of grades, contrary to popular belief, but I did skip one or two at a very young age. At a young age, I was stringing sentences together, um, or my mom told me, I don't remember from memory, but I was stringing sentences together and things along those lines, and that moved on to an academic career of me getting my associate's degree in psychology by the age of 10, my bachelor's degree in humanities by the age of 14, my master's degree in environmental and sustainable science by the age of 16, and now my doctorate of behavioral health um, in integrated behavioral health going on 18. And with that, alongside that, working on stigma and mental health and health in general through my degree, I've also simultaneously been the CEO of my own STEAM camp, which is a science, technology, engineering, arts, and math leadership camp. And so it builds leaders in multiple different ways, providing them resources that they need to move on to whatever places they would like in life. Our motto is providing a pathway to their dreams through STEAM. And so everything falls under that umbrella of STEAM. And so whether that is bringing up our counselors and working with them to help teach students and work with them and learn from the students themselves, or working with the students and doing different science, technology, engineering, arts, and math activities. I've also worked with students in South Africa and in Ghana. I have a STEAM school in Cape Town that we wanted to make a brick and mortar like official STEAM school and COVID happening and kind of stalling that for us was what encouraged me to create the camp. In 2020, fully COVID free, we had our first uh, full summer camp for the Dorothy Jean Steen Leadership Institute. And we went on to do it every year since then, alongside our winter sessions with our stimulators, which are winter and spring, where we do team building and bonding activities and world travel just to build the teams that we work with. I am definitely interested in the arts. That's definitely something that drives me more than anything else I've ever done in one way or another. I've practiced a lot of different forms of art. And so I'm on a dance team and my family owns a theater. And so of course I've acted all my life and in my own personal time, my favorite form of the arts is writing. And music has always been like one of my favorite things in the entire world is just analyzing it and breaking it down. I think the arts creativity just brings out something in people. And it also is important in every aspect of life. Like in STEAM, everything goes into the technologies or the math. There's an art to it. And so the fact that it goes hand in hand with all of the like smart or logical things that people like kind of focus on more so, I think kind of makes me love it even more because they really do just work together no matter how much people kind of try and make them seem like they're separate things like logical things and creative things. I think that artificial intelligence is a very powerful tool like something that we're very lucky to have just like the internet itself it's something that we're very lucky to have been able to create and think up but if we don't like continue to use our brains to like interact with it it'll kind of have more of a hold on us than we want it to i think that Everything needs regulations in moderation. So I definitely think that AI needs regulations in moderation because everything needs rules because every everything in the world has rules. But I think that the same way with the internet, there's only so much regulation that you can have. I feel like it goes like for the same. I think any challenges that I may have had being like a younger person in a lot of the classes that I was in for a, a lot of my academic career, it wasn't honestly the biggest challenge in actual class because a lot of them were on Zooms or if I was getting a test proctor, it was just me and the proctor that were involved in that. And so it wasn't like a bunch of people that I really had to interact with. 
But there are always those shocked reactions when like my classmates find out because a lot of times they won't even know until like graduation or like some, but usually they won't know until graduation. But it's never usually anything but more of a surprised like, oh, like that's that's great. But I think with people one-on-one who kind of like know me, it's more of like, a or people who I work with or deal with one-on-one or interact with every day, that's when it becomes more of like a a crazy thing because they kind of see me all the time but like are still juggling both of those perspectives of me and so I think the 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 biggest challenge like quote unquote would be dealing with the people in my real life like juggling those perceptions of me and which I'm really which one I'm leaning more to in the moment and how I would prefer to be perceived but people who kind of don't know me like classmates who haven't really got a chance to interact with me it's never really been a crazy thing my favorite artist I'm gonna say top five is Lucky, Taylor Swift, Jesse Reyes, J. Cole, and Hozier. I'm not sure if that was five. Oh, and Billie Eilish. That's what makes it not five. But my top artists are really easy, which that's terrible. <laughs> but my favorite book, maybe September Love by an artist. I don't remember their name, but it was an incredible, it was an incredible book and it's the most recent one I can remember. I I think that the best advice my mom has ever given me isn't particularly a piece of, well, I'm actually, I'm gonna answer the real question, but I'm gonna answer it the way I wanna answer it first. My mom has this thing that she calls like a toolbox and that's like, I'm never in trouble, I'm always in training. And so if I do something that's like something she wouldn't have preferred, it's like, okay, we're working on that though. I'm giving you tools to put in your toolbox. And so it's like when I was 10, I may have only had like a screwdriver, but now I have like a screwdriver, a nail gun. Like I have a lot of stuff in my toolbox. And that's basically a way of saying like, going through like things in life and experiences and just learning things from them, safety tips, different things like that and having tools in my toolbox. But I think if I had to pick like a quote that I can remember it was don't take advice from someone you wouldn't switch places with. Five years from now, I would like to be financially stable, which to me means I can wake up and not have to do anything and not and, and still be that same financially stable and have a home full of love and friends and people that is beautifully decorated and have done a lot more in STEAM and health to actually to have done anything to help the youth. Everything, because every little thing makes a difference. But if you can plan and lay out your schedule of how you're going to work on things, and if you stick to that as best as possible, you will have a much less stressful time. I think for leisure, I definitely hang out with my friends. We actually have very engaging, like deep conversations for leisure. Like we'll have the deepest, like we're, I feel like every friend group thinks like we need to have a podcast, but like, no, really me and my friends, like talk about like everything in the world. And then we'll just like go silent for another hour and like watch TikToks and like listen to a bunch of music. I love music. So just listening to music, getting on my phone and using the internet like other teenagers and hanging out with my friends. I think that my top three leadership skills, I would say are definitely understanding, communication and accountability. I think to tell you about my grandmother, the honorable former Ottoman of the Third Ward, Dorothy Tillman, growing up with her was, I mean, not very different than what a lot of people would expect from seeing her, you know, be so passionate for the things that she fought for in the news. I mean, she is passionate at home with the lessons that she teaches, you know, in any little thing, she's not gonna let that slide. She's gonna let you know, cause everything really is a lesson for later. I think in every interview now, I try and say for any parent who sees the interview, not to ever take the interview and show it to their kid, like, look at what you should be doing but to take it to their kid and to say, what could I do to better support you, to better build you up and to make sure that your dreams come true.